So I wanted to ask you um, this revelation to so many of us, uh, you being related to Frederick Douglass, and, and it's, it's, it's just an incredible story, but uh, I wanted to ask you, first of all, um, what he means in your life and why it's sort of relevant now to you and to your children and to your identity, and it's such an awesome thing. So tell us a little bit. Wow, that's a really deep question. I don't know that I've thought about it in, in that way. Um, I grew up knowing, you know, who he was and what he did for this country. Um, my family has always been really proud of the connection to Frederick Douglass. My dad named Frederick as well, um, you know, really tried to continue on the legacy as has many other family members. Um, but I think right this moment, it, it's been really interesting um, feeling even more of a connection or more of a grounding as to why I've always felt it be so important for me to use my voice when I can, speak up when I can. Um, and I've raised my girls to think the same way. And, and I never really thought about where that came from until recently when people have started to ask me about, you know, finding my voice or having a voice. Um, but I think now I know it's because I was raised that way. My, I grew up in a household with uh, uh, you know, an activist father and, and who always, you know, used his voice. He was a, he was a writer and, um, you know, speaker, et cetera. And so I, I think I'm more connected now to understanding that it's, it's just a part of who I am and it's part of because probably because of that Douglas legacy. Um, so yeah, really, really proud of, really proud of that connection and, and proud that my children can continue to, to share it um, with others as, as do my other family members. So what are your thoughts in terms of, you know, being in our industry for so long, being a woman of color, going through what we've gone through uh, recently in the last few months, uh, how has that sort of uh, affected you or some reflections on your, your path and, yeah. and sort of what you need to be doing as a leader? I found um, an article that I had done, a Frederick Douglass article that I had done for People Magazine when I was 23 years old. I just came across, across it recently. Um, and in there I said, you know, I want my platform to be equal rights for women. I was 23 years old. Um, and I, so I, I've, I've really become aware as to how equal rights for women equal rights for all races, um, especially in corporate America, has always been a part of what's important to me. And so now I'm just thrilled that there's so much great conversation happening in, in the workplace and people are talking about it and people are thinking about how to action um, what we've talked about, right? And so, and so the fact that I can now also participate in actually making the changes happen is really exciting. It's, um, it's, it's like reinvigorating, especially like right this very moment. Um, I haven't necessarily led as a leader, right? I haven't necessarily led with the thought of I'm a black woman and you know, I'm a leader. Like I, I, I've led with the thought of I'm a leader and what type of leader do I want to be? Now in this moment, I'm a black woman who's a leader, and that is a, a, almost a full circle connection of, of who I am. And I'm able to talk about those other aspects of my personal life, being black and being a woman um, in America. So what would some of those things be that, you, that you're sharing or you want to share about being a black woman in America? Well, you know, I think that the, the, the reality is that a, for a lot of us, and, and I know you've interviewed several people, I've seen your, your uh, other um, webinars, and I think there's probably a thematic, right, that, you, that we're all saying, which is this duality of life, this, this, this person who I am in my personal life versus the person I am in my professional life. And how do we get to a place where black people can feel like they can bring their whole selves to their work environments. And that's, that's probably been the, you know, the biggest challenge, I think, for um, a lot of black people. I think for women, same thing though, right? It's like, you know, they are, they're, they're struggling with um, 
all of the different stereotypes and, and, and uh, words that are used to describe women um, who are ambitious or who are outspoken. And, and so this, this notion of how do I be my true self and at the same time navigate the, the negative perceptions that might come from who I'm, who I am. Um, it, and so there's this, this like this constant inner voice that you're, you're, you're battling that I don't think people always knew was happening for women or for black people. And now I think people are aware that, you know, it's like, wow, I, di I didn't know you had to do all of that to get through your um, day to day, you know, um, hair. Female, women's hair is such a big thing, right? Black, you know, there's an initiative called the Crown Initiative um, that uh, a colleague, friend of mine, AC Bracey um, has at Unilever, which is really about allowing black women to wear their hair however they want to. But the, the hair issue is for all women, right? There are, there are a lot of women who think about, well, is my hair, the way I want to wear my hair appropriate in a work environment? Um, and so there's just a constant, you know, second guessing p potentially of um, who you are. I personally um, feel like I've been bringing my whole self to work for a long time, um, for better or for worse. Um, and, and I've just, I've been fortunate and very appreciative of working for companies and for bosses that have allowed me to bring my whole self. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, luckily feel like I have to um, really have a duality. I, I am who I am. And, and so that's been actually um, re very rewarding to, to be able to recognize that. So thinking about your great, great grandfather, Frederick Douglass, and what um, channeling sort of his spirit, uh, his inspiration that I know you carry on through your family, through these generations, what do you think um, he would want you to do? Or what do you think he'd want us to do as a society during this really, really troubling time? You know, I feel like there's, there's two scenarios that are happening right now. There's, there's kind of what's happening um, politically and socially and you know, in the streets, if you will, and then what's happening in corporate America. Um, I am feeling inspired by the conversations and the and what i'm seeing in corporate america um i i really do feel like there are, are a lot of people who are putting their money where their mouth is commitments and pledges people are act actively trying to um figure out what are we going to do the challenge though is that we unfortunately are not quite seeing that same um shift happening quite as quickly um, in the streets, and and so it's um, it's it's really challenging to me um, what what is happening, and you know I think if I was channeling him, it would be to first of all encourage everyone to vote. Um, I know people are really struggling with finding their voice, and you know trying to decide do they march, not march, or how do they use their social media. Etc. But I think the one thing that we all should be able to galvanize ourselves around is voting and 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 taking that action. I think that's what he would want me to say, right? Like I think what he would want me to say is to tell people to use their voice, however you feel comfortable using your voice, but use your voice, right? Like use, take a moment and take a stand and be active in this moment because what is happening is really unsettling. 